Hi, this is your host Sapna Bharatiya and today we have with us Ami Badani, Vice President of Developer Ecosystem Strategy at NVIDIA. Ami, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Today we are going to talk about the Open Programmable Infrastructure or OPI project. Um, so first of all, give us a, a brief kind of overview of the project. What is all about what is the goal behind the project? Yeah, so OPI stands for Open Programmable Infrastructure. And as you mentioned, rightly mentioned, we announced it last week that it's part of uh, one of the projects of the Linux Foundation. So that was sort of the announcement last week. The main goal of OPI is really focusing on how to operationalize and standardize DPUs, so sort of new class of infrastructure processors in your data center. So if you sort of think about, you know, over the last several years, there have been a lot, a lot of noise around this new class of processors that um, really focus on infrastructure applications and how you can offload, accelerate, and isolate those infrastructure applications. But what hasn't happened is a standard operating model on how to uh, operationalize these new class of processors in your data center. So every vendor has a different way to provision, lifecycle manage, different programming models, how to build on top of these, um, these different infrastructure processors. And so that's really the culmination of why OPI um, came about, was to create a standard operating model and a, an open standard for, uh, for these different class of processors that are just coming into fruition in the market. What are the core components of OPI? Yeah, so there are, you know, the organization actually just formed. So last week is when we announced it, but you know, the, the governance model and the structure is really still being defined. But in essence, there are kind of a, some core subgroups that um, that are focusing around open APIs. So what's the programming model and what are those OP APIs that will be exposed on top of the DPU? Uh, what's, you know, what does provisioning look like? How do you provision lifecycle manage troubleshoot across all these different types of DPUs in the market? Uh, proof of concepts, like what are the proof of concepts? What are the use cases? How are people using the DPUs? How can we create a standard reference architecture for a lot of ecosystem partners and customers? Uh, and then there are other kind of non-technical subgroups around what's the mission, the charter, the business model, uh, kind of all of those aspects. So today OPI is, is really a bunch of subgroups, both on the technical side and the business side that are being formed. Uh, but over time, what we intend for OPI to be is um, you know a, a set of APIs, uh, an SDK, uh, a standard reference model for um, for provisioning all of your your DPUs in your data center. But it's too early on for a lot of those components to exist today. But that's what we intend to happen over time. What kind of specific challenges uh, this project will address? At least to start with, that you are trying to look at and make it easier for enterprise customers to. Uh, to consume DPUs? What really hit home for us is we have several end users that have joined OPI. And the thing that they keep selling us is that, you know, when we use your DPU in our data center with, you know, the, the many applications that we have running on the DPU, you guys have a standard way to operationalize your data center. Then we use a DPU from a different vendor. It's a completely different framework. And so, you know, it's really hard for a customer to be able to have a multi-vendor approach when they are trying to stand up their data center applications. That's sort of one. The other end of the spectrum is another thing that we heard um, when we were kind of exploring our intent to join OPI is many of the OEM vendors, which I said, you know, a lot of them will have server-based systems with DPUs. There's just a different way to stand up a DPU in one server's vendor versus another server's vendor. Um, servers, um, ser another vendor server. And so when you sort of look at kind of the complexity that yields, uh, it's in, for us, you know, I think OPI will really help solve that problem around standardization, both at, you know, the, the server configuration level, as well as how end users are deploying DPUs in their data center. So it's kind of both ends of the spectrum. And OPI is really uh, kind of the conforming layer to help drive a lot of that adoption uh, and, and kind of standards-based approach. Uh, since you talk about, you know, the type of end users joining, so I also want to understand the kind of ecosystem that is going to be built around OPI, because when we talk about it, there will be a lot of vendors who will be commercializing it. Of course, there will be uh, core players who will be contributing the actual code, and then there will be a lot of users. So when we look at ecosystem, there's not one player, you know, they're different, you know, stakeholders. So talk about, you know, what kind of community you're planning to build around OPI or what kind of community is already there? 
Yeah, so the the founding members of OPI today uh, will, that you know have existed since last week are there are a couple different folks. One is on the server side. We have Dell as one of the main server OEM vendors that has joined OPI as a founding member. Then you have a lot of the software vendors like F5, Red Hat uh, uh, that have joined OPI uh, as a founding member. Then you have some of the testing vendors like Keysight that has joined as a founding member of OPI. And then you have the semiconductor vendors and the software vendors uh, around those semiconductor processors. And those would be kind of Intel, Marvell, and of course, uh, NVIDIA. So you have kind of different layers of the stack in terms of the, the founding members. Uh, now, I think one of the things that we'll see, and this is these are the founding members as I listed, and that's sort of a short list, but I think what one of the things that we'll see over time is that ecosystem uh, growing with end users. So the ones that I mentioned today are mainly software vendors, um, hardware vendors, testing vendors, but what we'll see over time is the ecosystem or the end users will have um, you know, a motive to join, to really say, hey, these are the problems that we're facing in our data center. How can all of the, the vendors as part of this ecosystem really drive a standard that matches what customers are seeing in their own data center? So today, you know, the, the founding members are, as I mentioned, there's many more participants of OPI than there are founding members. Um, so there's probably too broad of a list to, to name, but there's many, uh, there's many more than um, both on the end user side, as well as the hardware side, as well as the software side. Uh, as much as we want to see everything uh, be open source, I mean, uh, there are certain industries where open source is critical, it makes a lot of sense. And then a lot of areas where, you know, proprietary software makes sense as well. Uh, so, if I ask you from your perspective, what are, what is the importance of open source in certain industries? Because that's where you know you folks, especially Nvidia, you get involved with. So talk about that, so we can understand from your perspective, you're involved with the project, and there you see the importance of open source. Yeah, so you know Nvidia itself, we're, we're a big believer in open source. If you sort of look at, you know, just from the networking stack, all the different cont contributions that we make to open source, whether it's um, you know, open vSwitch or the Linux kernel or storage open source projects like SPDK, networking based projects like DPDK. I mean, there's many, many different open source projects that we've contributed to either we've started or, you know, we're second, third, fourth in terms of code contribution. So first and foremost, we believe open source is um, fundamentally important to our business model and our strategy. I think you know for us I think the main our our main belief around open source is you can drive products faster to market with open source. So if you sort of think about all of the the contributions that you can collect across the community it really forges uh the right behaviors. And so that's sort of the reason why you know we were so we're so prominent on a lot of these open source projects because we believe that's you know how you can uh create change in the market. So that's sort of our, our belief and our conviction. I mean, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this project. And more importantly, uh, you shared the, you know, the, the NVIDIA's, you know, the approach towards open source, that's really important. So thanks for sharing that as well. And as there are more updates, progress of the project, I would love to have you folks back on the show, but I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Great, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to, as OPI progresses and we have much more uh, contributions by way of the community, we'd love to come back and kind of give you an update. So thank you for having us.